British Lithium have discovered 161 million tonnes of lithium ore in the granite beneath this Cornish clay mine. Supported by the Automotive Transformation Fund, they've built a pilot processing plant at the same location. And they've begun producing 99.8% pure battery grade lithium carbonate. This project is part of the Advanced Propulsion Centre's work to secure the supply chains that will enable the UK automotive sector to transition to a low carbon future. The UK and Europe doesn't have any domestic source of lithium. So at the moment they're completely reliant on producers like Australia sending their concentrate through to China and refining it and then sending us out concentrate. And of course the Chinese want to sell us electric vehicles, not lithium. So I think over the past few years we've realised that as a country and as the EU that we need to be more self-sufficient in the way we obtain our raw key ingredients to fuel our economy. We can't have car companies obligingly building electric car plants at gigafactories and then finally can't get the raw materials to make the cars. That would be a dreadful thing. So there's a very, very pressing need for the UK and Europe as a whole to develop domestic supply. The team behind British Lithium are Australian. Having worked internationally, they identified the UK as the best place in the world to mine and refine lithium. Rather than look for lithium, which is a daunting task, lithium occurs all around the world, we decided to look where was the best jurisdiction in order to develop a quarry and processing plant. And we came across the UK. It has a number of advantages. It has a, a rule of law, it has certainty of title, and it also has very high ESG standards. Cornwall in particular had a very strong mining heritage. In fact, it still has a lot of quarrying taking place at the moment. Just behind me is the China clay mines. Um, so when we discovered this deposit, it just made sense that this would be the perfect location. It's inside the UK, it's in Europe, and it has unlocked lithium potential. Uh, well, first of all, in the UK, there's tremendous research and development capacity. There's a lot of very smart scientists here and smart universities. And a lot of universities have received funding, by the way, for programs to do with critical minerals. Um, there is a big ecosystem of science development, R&D, and there is a very engaged government keen to provide that sort of support. A key function of the Automotive Transformation Fund is scale-up readiness validation. Their funding helped British Lithium get ready to the transition to full-scale production. Well, a very concrete thing they've done through their support and funding is allowed us to build an end-to-end -end lithium pilot plant where we take Cornish granite in one end all the way through the process and produce actual 99.8% lithium at the end. And this physical manifestation of the process is, is very important for ongoing process development, training of staff, but also being able to show it to people. I contrast this with the usual approach where a company might do laboratory test work in another country and a bit in another country. At the end of it, all they have is a PowerPoint presentation and some written reports. We're having this big physical thing is actually doing the duty, you know, works in so many levels, social, political and technical. We had what we felt was a credible technology, but it still carried a fair de degree of risk. You know, this is a new technology. Mining lithium in Europe is a new concept. So commercial backers are a bit wary to enter into something so early stage. Yet we knew the technology had promise. So that's where the ATF steps in and they provide a bridge to de-risk the technology to a point where commercial backers can come in and take it forward. And that's indeed what has happened. The scale-up readiness validation and working pilot plant gave the international mining and chemicals conglomerate Imeris the confidence to invest in British lithium. Imeris are a conservative and well-run company, so they did a very detailed due diligence on what we're doing. They looked at our pilot plant, went through it, and they concluded this really is a, is a goer. And so they've invested heavily in British lithium as a result of that. We're now in partnership, racing toward full-scale development. So it wouldn't have happened without the funding, we'd still be just doing things in test tubes. Thanks to the grant, we're now at a point where we've attracted a major joint venture partner. We're speaking to OEMs. We're about to submit our pre-planning application to the Cornwall Council. So we have a very clear path ahead of us in order to enter production. I think it's all down to the initial support given by the ATF. As well as financial support, the Automotive Transformation Fund has facilitated introductions to important government and industry stakeholders. Other than just funding, the ATF provides a very vital role in cross-pollinating or joint up thinking between government departments. They're very involved in science and technology and R&D with energy, uh, uh, energy security and supply 
and with the car industry on battery development. So they're across the whole industry value chain and they bring all those parts together and allow us to cross-pollinate, if you like, with those other parts. By supporting British Lithium, the Automotive Transformation Fund has facilitated a critical element of the UK's electric vehicle supply chain. A lot of the economics of it are about the battery. It's about half the weight and half the cost of the electric vehicle. And under the rules of origin, for export to our biggest car market, which is Europe, 70% of that battery has to be made in the UK. And that wouldn't be possible if you didn't make the lithium here. If we make an, uh, LFP batteries in the UK, we don't need any other critical raw materials for that battery, only iron and phosphorus. So we can insulate ourselves a bit from those other critical supply chains. With the support of UK government funding, British Lithium has developed the world's most environmentally friendly and chemical free lithium refining process. I think if you look at the historic source of lithium production, you know, mined in Western Australia using diesel, it's trucked all the way to the port, then it's shipped all the way to China, then it's refined again using coal. It is quite carbon intensive. In Europe, we have the opportunity to do things a bit differently. For starters, we're putting the lithium processing plant and the quarry on the same site. There goes all of the transportation cost. Also, the UK's grid is about 47% renewable, so the energy we're consuming is also much greener than our peers in Western Australia and in China. And that's a competitive advantage because when car companies audit our ESG factors, which they do, um, they can see that our carbon emissions per tonne are less than half uh, of, of the, the lowest existing producer. With the support of the Automotive Transformation Fund, British Lithium and Imaris are on track to produce 20,000 tonnes of lithium carbonate per year. That's enough for 350,000 electric vehicle batteries. To find out more about how the Automotive Transformation Fund and the Advanced Propulsion Centre are making the UK one of the best places in the world to invest in low carbon transportation manufacturing, visit apcuk.co.uk.